chapter 11. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Come, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Come, let us build us a city and a tower with its top in heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, they are of one people, and they have all one language. And this is what they begin to do. And now nothing will be withholden from them, which they purpose to do. Come, let us go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there, upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore was the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from there did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. These are the generations of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old and begot of Pachashad, two years after the flood. And Shem lived after he begot of Pachashad five hundred years and begot sons and daughters. And of Pachashad lived five and thirty years and begot Shelach. And of Pachashad lived after he begot Shelach five hundred and three years, and begot sons and daughters. And Shalach lived thirty years, and begot Eber. And Shalach lived after he begot Eber, four hundred and three years, and begot sons and daughters. And Eber lived four and thirty years, and begot Peleg. And Eber lived after he begot Peleg, four hundred and thirty years, and begot sons and daughters. And Peleg lived thirty years, and begot Reu. And Peleg lived after he begot Reu two hundred and nine years and begot sons and daughters. And Reu lived two and thirty years and begot Serug. And Reu lived after he begot Serug two hundred and seven years and begot sons and daughters. And Serug lived thirty years and begot Nachor. And Serug lived after he begot Nachor two hundred years and begot sons and daughters. And Nachor lived nine and twenty years, and begot Terach. Nachor lived after he begot Terach a hundred and nineteen years, and begot sons and daughters. And Terach lived seventy years, and, be, and begot Abram, Nachor, and Haran. Now these are the generations of Terach. Terach begot Abram, Nachor, Haran, and Haran begot Lot. And Haran died in the presence of his father, Terach, in the land of his nativity, in Ur of the Chassadi. And Abram and Nahor took them wives, and Abram's wife was Sarai, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. And Sarai was barren, she had no child. And Terah took Abram his son, and Lot, the son of Haran, his son's son, and Sarai, his daughter-in-law, his son Abram's wife. And they went forth with them from Ur of the Kassidi to go into the land of Hanan. And they came unto Haran and dwelt there. And the days of Tarak were two hundred and five years, and Tarak died in Haran. All right, let's go back up to verse 1. Today, or in this chapter, we have a a little bit of the genealogy. We're going to go back into Shem's genealogy, but we also have here at the first a little story, a story of uh, uh, in, uh, during this time. We're, we're going to re- go back to about the period of Peleg, most likely, because that was when the earth was divided. And this is probably going to be the kind of a little bit of the understanding of what that division was. But as we go through, uh, one way to study is to draw parallels. Draw parallels. Parallels are kind of like um, repetitions, maybe in a different sort, but of a similar understanding. 
uh, these parallels are like rays or lines coming forth these rays or understandings as we see these repetitions or these repeatings these redoings these recountings it's like a book itself and we can draw these parallels and they're like rays of light even through the history to even to today's period uh, just to, just one means of study we're going to pick it up here in verse 1 and the whole earth was of one language and one speech now the whole earth was of one language and one speech and we this is the they all had one language they all had one understanding but there's a little more to it than that they all had one lip that's of course they spoke one language but they uh, had one one cause they had one uh, purpose and we're going to find out what their purpose was and it's a good thing to have one purpose if your purpose is for good uh, but that was not be the their intent too and it came to pass as they journeyed east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and there they dwelt and it came to pass in time as they journeyed east towards that place of enlightenment thinking that's possibly where understanding comes from and uh, they found this plain a plain is a flat place and it it was in the land of Shinar and we remember Shinar was that country of two rivers that's where understanding was split one went one way one went one way then another way that would be cut off even we could think uh, and they dwelt there this is the place where they're going to dwell stay Uh, live and we'll see what they're going to do three and they said one to another come let us make brick and burn them thoroughly and they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar so and they said one to another come I believe the King James version here says go to and we kind of get that it sounds like a really old type of language and it and it is uh, we we'll find uh, as we go through some of these words uh, have older ages than others, and kind of helps us give us a little date, uh, a little in instruction to when they were written. But come, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. They had brick for stone. Uh, brick was made out of clay, and we're going to find here. This is when they created an oven. And the Book of Yasha would give us a little more knowledge and understanding of what was going on that time. Nimrod would be the commander of that uh, furnace. They had slime, had they for mortar. This slime here is like raw tar as it comes forth up out of the ground, uh, pitch, four. And they said, come let us build a city and a tower with its top in heaven and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And they said, let us build us a city. Let us build a place of protection, a wall fortress. Let us uh, create us a place. And a tower. A tower is a high place, a high place even of security. A uh, similar thing what men still try to do. Uh, with its top in heaven, where its, where its peak is in heaven. And that's in the height of all understanding that no man can reach that supposedly but they would control that place that's where they would reign and have their spot lest we be scattered abroad upon the whole face of the whole earth lest we be scattered abroad lest something happens and we no longer uh, would remember five and the Lord came down to see the city and the tower with the children of men built so the Lord came down to see the city, and we get this impression. The Lord came down. The Lord don't have to come down. The Lord's present constantly. Uh, to come down means to descend into that understanding of man, to see what he's doing. Uh, to see that city and that tower, that place they was building, in that fortified place, a place that's got a guard, a little something, something to watch over it. That which the children of men had built. Now, uh, we know the Lord don't, he knows they can't build nothing, and, but it's all a parallel, a kind of like a little something we can compare it to, 
And the Lord said, Behold, they are one people, and they have all one language. This is what they begin to do. And nothing, nothing will be withholden from them which they purpose to do. And the Lord said, Behold, now look. They are all one people, and they have all one language. But that's the way the Lord made you in the beginning, see? In agreement, one with another. That way you could get something done. He thought you was going to do some good. See, that was the intent. And this is what they begin to do. This is what they do. Try to make a name for themselves. Try to build them a tower. Uh, now nothing will be withholding. Now they'll do anything they want to do. They'll do anything they purpose to do. And we'll find out that their intent was evil from the beginning. To build that. To reign in that area. That place. That high place of understanding. It already belongs to the Lord. Seven. Come. Let us go down. There confound their language. That they may not understand one to another's speech. Let us go down. Let us. Let, let these powers. These strings. These abilities. All the might and the power of earth. And there. Confuse their language. Confuse their understandings. Confuse their lip that they may not understand one another's speech. We'll draw line, lines in their borders. They'll no longer be able to agree with each other. Sound familiar? That they may not understand one another's speech or their purposes. So no longer do men understand. They don't have that ability to understand the purpose of their neighbor. Nine, therefore, was the name of it called Babel. Because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from there did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. That's why the name of it was called Babel. Babel means confusion. That's why, why the Lord confounded them there. He confused the purposes, the language, the that borders that would enclose man. He give a little confusion in it. So man can't come to this uh, duty because we'll find out the intent of his heart is evil from his beginning. Ten. Now these are the generations of Shem. Shem was a hundred years old. He begot Apachashad two years after the flood. Now these would be the generations of Shem. Shem means the name and presence. Uh, it was a hundred years ago in judgment is the greater understanding of that, of the past, even. And Shem was one of the sons of Noah, uh, the one that remains. Arpachashad, and he begot Arpachashad two years after the flood, and that's when the Lord had destroyed all flesh. And Shem would give birth to, his son would be Arpachashad. Arpachashad was this one who was going to fell at the breast and it was, well, we can witness these greater understandings. It was after the flood. That's when God destroyed all the earth. Eleven. Shem lived after he begot Arpachashad 500 years, and he begot sons and daughters. And Shem uh, lived after he had begot Arpachashad 500 years. But there's grace in, in that greater understanding of the judgments for this one who even fells at the breast. Because he begot sons and daughters, twelve, and Arpachshad lived five and thirty years, and he begot Shalach, and Arpachshad going to live five and thirty years. Five, there's grace in that dedication of the greater understandings that we're going to be talking about. Three, uh, thirty years to complete that witness of the law, and that's when the Lord created all living, and uh, and divided that that which separates them. The third day. And he begit, he begot Shalak. He gives birth to this sprout. This this sprout, this new life, this little this coming forth. Uh kinda like a vine and sometimes the upper branches start to die, but a little sprout will come forth from the rootstock. Thirteen. And our Pakashad lived after he begot Shalak four hundred and three years and begot sons and daughters. And our Pakashad would continue, lived, continued. After he gave birth to Shalak, that sprout, 403 years. Four, that's the work of God in the judgment. 
it's going to be to complete the greater understandings or that we might witness even the, the completion of the greater understandings. 14, and Shalak lived 30 years and he begot a better Shalak, that's Brown. He's going to live for 30 years. That's that. That's dedicated for those greater understandings. Uh, and he begot a butter. Butter is even that region beyond or that portion, that place that's beyond what? The river, that possibly. 15. And Shalak lived after he begot a butter 403 years and begot sons and daughters. Shalak continues. After he gives birth to a butter, uh, 400, and that's going to be the work of God and the judgment uh, that completes that understanding. He goes ahead and he gives birth to sons and daughters. 16, a butter lived 430 years and begot Peleg. Man, a butter, that's that portion that's beyond. He lives 430 years. That's the work of God in that dedicated portion of the greater understandings and he begot Peleg Peleg means divided separated, split uh, that's what we was talking about in the river was split this place where the there's a place of two rivers uh, the, the the words there are divided, the confounded or confused 17 and the bird lived after he begot Peleg 430 years and he begot sons and daughters and he's going to continue it better does uh, after he has Peleg for 430 years four is always the work of God and judgment and it's dedicated for the greater understandings 18 and Peleg lived 30 years and he begot Ru Ru Peleg uh, continues for 30 years uh, and, that, and that's dedicated for the greater understandings, that which was divided. And he begot Reu, or Reu comes forth. Uh, Reu means friend. Friend is um, someone who is going to help or support. Nineteen. And Peleg lived, Peleg lived after he begot Reu 209 years and begot sons and daughters. Peleg's going to continue after he begets uh, Reu, his friend, 209 years. And now we can witness that judgment. And there's going to be some truth in the greater understandings or a harvest there. And he begot sons and daughters. 20 and Reu lived two and 30 years and he begot Saru. Saru, uh, so Reu continues. Uh, this, the friend, the, the support continues. Now, 230 years witness the, that dedication of the greater understandings. He begets Sarug. Sarug is the branch. A branch that's intertwined, more like an, a, a tangling. Now, uh, 21, Aru lived after he begot Sarug 207 years, and he begot sons and daughters. So Ru will continue the, 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 the friend, the companion, uh, who gives birth to the entanglings. Uh, we can witness the judgment because it will complete the greater understandings. 22. Sarug lived 30 years and he begot Nahar. And Sarug will continue. That's that entangling twines. And he begot Nahar. Nahar means to the snort to snort or the snore 23 and said Rug lived after he begot Nakor 200 years and he begot sons and daughters and Sarug that intertangling or the branches the, that intertangle uh, will continue after he begets this one who's going to snore or witness them judgments in the greater understandings uh, 200 years 24 and Nahor lived 9 and 20 years and he begot Tarak so Nahor is the one who comes forth from that branch 
he's going to continue for 9 and 20 years, and he's going to give birth to Tarak. Tarak means the station, the post, the place, uh, position. Now, this 9, that's the truth. Uh, 20 is always redemption. There would be redemption if we could witness law and the greater understandings. He's going to give birth to that position or that station. 25, and Nakor lived after he begot Tarak 119 years and begot sons and daughters. And he will continue after he begets the position. Uh, and that's judgment in that 19 years. That's, that's the truth in the law, the greater understandings. He'll beget sons and daughters as well. And Tarak lived 70 years and begot Abram, Nakor, and Haran. So now Tarak lived 70 years, and this is going to be to finish the greater understandings. And he begot Abram, Nachor, and Haran. Abram means the exalted father. Uh, Nachor means the one who snores. Haran is this mountaineer, this one who treads the high places. We might look at it that way. 27. Now these are the generations of Tarak. Uh, Tarak begot Abram, Nahor, Haran, and Haran begot a lot. And Haran begot Lot. Now these are the generations, are the records of uh, these that come forth from Tarak. Tarak uh, was that position, that station. Uh, he gives birth to Abram, that exalted father, uh, Nahor, uh, named after his grandfather, I suppose, and Haran. Um, this mountaineer, the one who treads the high places. 28. A Quran died in the presence of his father, Torah, in the land of his nativity, in Ur of the Qasidi, or the Chaldi. No, Quran, and we're going to see, he's the brother of Abram, and he dies in the presence of his father, Torah. Um, We'll get a little more knowledge about this in the book of Yasher. Yasher gives a, little, a few little bit of detail about this. It's in the land of his nativity in Ur. Ur is that flame, the place of the fire. And we're going to see that's exactly what Quran died. Uh, and it was in that place of the Chaldee. Chaldee were the clod breakers. They were supposed to be the wisest of all the all those 29. And Abram and the court took them wives. And the name of Abram's wife was Sarai. And the name of Nahor's wife was Milka, the daughter of Karan, the father of Milka, and the father of Iska. And Abram, that's the exalted father. We'll see the story. His name's going to be changed later on. And Nahor, that was his uh, brother, took them wives. The name of Abram's wife, or his this uh, uh, his wife, is the one it was we, that he takes to himself. Even it's going to be a reflection of his own understanding. His wife Sarai, Sarai is the princess, uh, the princess, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milka, and the name of Nahor's wife was Milka. Milka means queen. The daughter, a queen, is the feminine sense of the ruler. The daughter of Koran, uh, she was that understanding that comes forth from Haran and that mountaineer, the one who tread the high places. Uh, he was the father of Milka, the queen, and the father of Iska. Iska is this one who looks forward, or the one who can see um, forward, or these these ones who try to predict 30 and Sarai was barren she had no child and we'll see the princess she didn't have a child and 31 and Tarak took Abram his son and Lot the son of Haran his son's son and Sarai his daughter-in-law and his son Abram's wife and they they went forth with them from Ur of the Kassidi to go into the land of Canaan and they came unto Haran and dwelt there. So now, uh, Tarak, uh, 
this one of that position, the, that one of that post, he takes Abram, uh, his son, the one that come forth from him, his exalt, the exalted father, and Lot. Lot means the veil or a covering, something that is seems to hide or that to cover. Uh, he's the son of Haran, uh, the one who tread the high places. Uh, and Sarai, of course, the princess, and the daughter-in-law, his daughter-in-law, or the one that come forth from him according to the law, his son, Abram's wife, Abram, Abram is the exalted father, and they went forth from there, uh, that place of Ur, Ur was the flame, or the fires, that of Kasadi of the Kasadi, and that's the clod breakers, those that was supposed to be the most wise ones, and to go into the land of Canaan. And that was the land of humility, the land of humbleness. We remember Canaan. He was the son of uh, Ham, uh, the son of Noah. And they came unto Haran, not the man, the city. And the city is uh, the city of the mountains, that high place that has a place there, maybe a protector. And they dwelt there. And the days of Tabrak were two hundred and five years, and Terach died in Haran. And the days and the, number, and the understandings even of uh, that position were two hundred. We can witness the judgment. In five years, grace will be in the greater understandings. Terach died in that position in the place of Haran, that city in the mountains, not the man. We're going to move forward to Genesis 12, turn and return.